Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about an interesting piece of software named Portfolio Performance. Now this program lets you track the performance of a financial portfolio, as you can probably guess from the title. It's available as both a Linux, Mac OS, and Windows program, and an iOS and Android app. What I think makes this really special is that it essentially lets you put your financial information in it, like you know, how many stocks you own of a certain company, or how much of this security or this currency that you own. And then it just tracks it over time. You tell it when you bought something and when you sold something, and it will tell you the performance based off price data, which it downloads from the internet. I think this is a lot better than having to log on to some banking platform or something like that, where you have to put in a bunch of OTP codes and passwords and whatever, just to see assets that you already own. And it essentially allows you to try investment strategies without risking money. Now, just before I begin showing you the actual software, I wanna make it perfectly clear that this video is not financial advice. Obviously, this program doesn't actually let you buy cryptocurrencies and stocks. It's just for pure information only. But just in case you had that idea, I want to make it clear that I'm not advocating for buying or selling anything at all with this video. And if you do make any investments, they're entirely at your own risk. All right. So with that out of the way, if you want to install the app, all you got to do is scroll down on the website and you can download it for pretty much every operating system. And if you have Arch Linux, you can actually get it from the AUR. As you can see, it's available as portfolio-performance-bin. It's also available on GitHub where you can compile it from source because it is an open source program. When you open it for the first time, you'll be faced with this little gray screen over here. Before I show you guys how to create your very own portfolio, I'm going to open this Comer sample file to show you guys some of the basic features. So there's three main sections I'm going to talk about in this video, securities, accounts, and reports. The way that this works is that you add securities you want to invest in in securities, you put money into your accounts, securities into your securities accounts in the account section, and then the reports section gives you reports on the actual performance of your stocks. So as as we can see in the chart section, the money has gone up since I'm assuming this is quarter three, 2023. You can customize these. I'm going to show you guys how to do that later. You can also see this holdings page, which shows you the percentage of the different stocks that you own. So in this example, Amazon comprises 14.54 of this portfolio's valuation. And then performance is like a general screen where you can put a bunch of different data and you can customize it and move it around and you can just see how your stocks are actually doing. So with all that covered, let's actually set up our very own account from scratch. So the first thing you want to do is click create a new file and you got to pick a currency. In this example, uh, I'm not going to do Belize dollar. I'm going to do just US dollars like pretty much everyone else. So I'm going to set it to United States dollar and then we have to give names to our securities and our reference account. So I'm going to name the securities accounts uh, stocks or I'll just call it security. It's probably simple. And then I'm going to call our reference account checking because it's basically a checking account. We're going to add them and as you can see, we have a set of securities and checking accounts. Then we got to press finish. And as you can see, it's set up our account with nothing in it. The first thing you want to do is save your account before you do anything. So I'm going to just go to file and then click save. And it's going to ask us for either password protected, binary or XML. The best thing you can do is pick password protected because this way you can have a file which nobody can access. If you have sensitive financial information in here, you know, stuff pertaining to how much of a certain stock you own and you want to hide it from people, then I recommend having a password protected file. I've got, I've just got to some random folder on my computer. You can put it on your desktop or wherever. Uh, I'll just call it Billy Portfolio. That, that, that's probably good dot portfolio because that's the extension that you choose and all we got to do is press save and then it's going to ask us for a password so in this case i'm not going to put a super secure password because this is just an example but in real life you want to set something secure so that people don't go checking all your securities and stuff like that so i'm going to do one two three four five six uh, I guess it's not the most secure password, but we'll just go with it for now. So I'm going to press OK. All right. So now that we've saved our file, let's start actually adding stuff to it. So the first thing you want to do is put some money in our account. So I'm going to go to deposit accounts and I'm going to right click and I'm going to press deposit. So here we got to put some actual money. I'm going to say that we put the money in. Uh, let's put it last year. So let's say August 8th last year, we put in $5,000 into our investment account, just like that. So as you can see, we have $5,000. And if we go down to the all transactions section, we can see that deposit that happened. Then we actually have to add securities to invest in because if you go to the securities accounts and right click, uh, you can't really just like invest into stuff. You have to first 
register securities which you want to save price data for. So if you go up here to the plus button next to the securities tab, you can click this and add a new instrument, cryptocurrency, exchange rate, or consumer price index. In this video, I'm gonna just do a basic example with cryptocurrency. If you click on that, it will open up a list of popular cryptocurrencies. I'm gonna just pick Bitcoin because that's the most obvious one. And as you can see, it's gonna start downloading all the price data. If you go to historical quotes, it'll show you the price data for Bitcoin on different days. All this information can pretty much be left as is. All you gotta do is press okay. And then if you go to the all security section, as you can see, we have Bitcoin. Now, if you wanna track just how Bitcoin itself is doing, you can click on it and uh, just drag this section up here and it shows you a chart of the performance of Bitcoin over time. You can change the time frame up here in this section with the different years. So you can do like one month, two months, six months, one year, two years, three years, five years, so on and so forth. Now that we've actually got a security to invest in, you can right click on it and click buy and set a date that you bought it at. So since we put money in on August 8th of 2023, we can only really buy it after. So I'm gonna say that on August 10th of that same year, I bought 0.05 Bitcoin, which is approximately $1,471.48 at the time. So you can also change the quote that you bought them at if perhaps you didn't buy it at that exact same quote, or you can just set the number of dollars in Bitcoin you bought. So let's say I bought, um, they made me pay 1500 worth of dollars for it. Then in that case, I'd be paying a $30,000 quote on it. And it automatically calculates that for that. And it automatically calculates that for you. You can also add any fees or stuff like that to it. So let's say I paid $5 worth of processing fees. Now all we got to do is press save. And now if we go down to all transactions, as you can see, we have our deposit and we have $1,500 Bitcoin purchase. And as you can see, we now own, it says 0.1, but it's actually rounding up. If you go and hover over it, it'll say 0.05. And that's kind of an annoying part if you have very, very small quantities of shares. So now that we've actually bought the Bitcoin, we can begin looking at the performance of our account over time. So if we go down to chart, as you can see, it'll give you this black line, which is the total value of your investments since the beginning of when they've been tracked. And I'm gonna show you guys how to customize the screen so you can get more relevant information. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to the settings one and actually add a data series. Now, all these different things represent different data series you can add to the chart. So for example, checking account just shows you the money in your checking account, which as you can probably guess, literally just went down one time when we bought the Bitcoin and that's it. Securities is just securities and securities plus checking is all of your accounts combined. I'm not gonna add that, but what I will add is this thing over here at the very bottom under the securities section, Bitcoin. So this will show us the value of our Bitcoin alone in our portfolio. Now, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change the time frame. It's pretty ideal here because we've set it to one year and we coincidentally purchased the shares exactly one year ago, but you can set it to anything you want. All you gotta do is click this drop down menu where it says one year, clicking new, and you can set a bunch of different things for what the time frame should be. I'm gonna do since August, um, yeah, August 6th, let's say August 6th, 2023. So even when days pass, this view will still begin at the exact same date. It won't just go one year before. So I'm going to press OK. And now we have that as a selectable option in the different years. If we were to go to two years, as you can see, we'd have nothing in our account. Then suddenly we'd have something when we deposited those $5,000. And then suddenly we buy Bitcoin, which means we go down by whatever we paid the fees at. And then as you can see, the money goes up after there because of the price of Bitcoin. So I'm going to set it back to since August 6th. Now, the next cool thing you can do is you can customize the lines. So if you right click down on these colors, which represent different things, you can customize customize the color and shape of the line. So I'm going to do show area. And as you can see, it shows this really fancy area under it because this is the total. And I guess it would make sense to show the area. And then what we can also do is change the Bitcoin one to a different color. So I'm going to go down here and make it yellow because people associate that color with Bitcoin. And I guess it makes sense. All right. So we have a basic view set up here, but you can actually have more than one view if you want. If you click this button over here with the very, very small plus, it says new view. You can give a new view view to your account. So I'm going to call this one Bitcoin only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the transferals and the default stuff that it comes with. I'm going to click on the settings gear, add data series, and just add Bitcoin to it. I'm going to right click on it, make sure that the color is set to yellow, which makes sense for Bitcoin. And I'm going to also show area to make it look all nice and fancy. 
Now what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna use it later when we set up the performance section. I'm gonna actually show you guys how you can put a chart here. Another thing we might wanna do is invest in different assets. So let's say we also wanted to buy a different cryptocurrency like Ethereum, for example. And then I just press okay over here and I right click on it and click buy. And let's say I wanted to buy, uh, I don't know, one Ethereum's worth, but I'm gonna buy it all the way in uh, September 8th, 2023, there you go. So one is worth about that. Let's say I paid, $1,700 for it instead, which gives us a perfect quote of $1,700, and I paid no fees on it. So I click OK, and as you can see, if we go to transactions, we can see that we bought Bitcoin on August 10th, and then we also bought Ethereum on September 8th. Now, if we go back to our chart section under reports and we go to the standard view, which is the one we we're working on previously, you can actually click on the gears icon, add data series and add Ethereum to it as well. So as you can see, we have those two investments and it shows what they equal at different times. So if Bitcoin's higher than Ethereum, if Ethereum is higher than Bitcoin. Now, since we bought different quantities of each, it'll be a little, you know, it won't be like a perfect comparison of how high or low they've gone, but it will give you a general idea. All right. So I added added that Ethereum there so I could show you guys the holding section. As you can see, we have 39.71% of our money in Bitcoin, 34.85% of our money in Ethereum, and 25.44% is still in our checking account and it hasn't actually been moved anywhere. With the holdings one, you can't customize the colors or anything, which I think really sucks. They should add that feature, but it just gives you a very, very short view of what's going on. Now that we're in the performance section, you can actually just right click outside of the main sections and click on new widget or highlight new widget. And then if you go to statement of assets and select statement of assets chart, it'll give you this chart. Now you can set this to pretty much any chart you want by right clicking and going to chart and sending it to something else. At the moment, I've set it to that main one that we already have. But if I want to set it to Bitcoin only, I can set it to that. And we can put this up here at the very, very top somewhere. And for example, we can uh, right click here and click on new widget common heading and I'm going to set the heading to like Bitcoin and I can just drag that heading right at the top of that and it shows us the performance of our Bitcoin. So you can create custom charts in this section and then just put them in the performance section if you want. There's also lots of different data you can get from the key indicators. So now we have all these percentages and like money that you've made, but you can also add different stuff. Like for example, the holdings section that we were looking at previously, you could just have that as a chart that you can look at in performance. Finally, if if this isn't enough columns for you, you can click on the gears icon and click new column and you can start dragging stuff over there and like modifying things that you want to put there. So this allows you to track things a, a lot easier if you want to have like a nice customizable environment. The next section I'm going to show you guys is the performance chart. So this is like the statements of assets chart that we were looking at earlier, but this actually shows you percentages of money that you've made. This will have the same time frames that we set up in the statement of assets chart, but the views will be different. So for example, if I want to add Bitcoin to this view. I'm going to click on the gear, go to add data series, scroll down, click on Bitcoin. I'm going to quickly just uh, make it yellow, just like that. And then I'm going to also add another data series uh, and I'm going to make it Ethereum. And I'm going to just get rid of the entire before portfolio over there. I'm going to make Ethereum purple since that color makes more sense to me. And as you can see, the percentages for Bitcoin seem to always, nearly always be higher than Ethereum, which if you're like a financial analyst, you could probably interpret this information and understand what it means and stuff like that. Now, suppose that we wanted to sell one of the cryptocurrencies. Now we can go back to all securities, right click on the one that we want to sell. Let's say we want to sell our Ethereum and click sell. And we just got to set the date at which we sell it. I'm going to say I sold it back in April 17th, 2024, and that I sold, it defaults to selling all of your shares, but I'm going to say that, yeah, I just sold all my shares. I'm going to say that they gave me, they gave me two 984, but I had to pay $10 worth of fees and I don't know, $15 worth of taxes. Now, if I press save, what it will do is it will add that transactions. As you can see, it's red because we're selling the Ethereum. And if we go back to our chart, and go to the standard one. As you can see, the Ethereum just suddenly goes to zero because we sold it. And the value of our portfolio uh, doesn't change. Well, it changes a little bit because we paid those fees, but it's generally the same because that money has actually been transferred to our checking account. I'm just gonna add it really quickly here. As you can see, that's checking account. This is when we spend money and this is when we make money. I'm gonna make it, uh, let's make it orange since that, that kind of makes sense. There you go. So yeah, that's how you sell different securities. Now there's a lot more to this program. I know that you can do a lot of different calculations and that's pretty much beyond the scope of this video. I just wanna show you guys how you can make these cool looking graphs and check the performance of different financial assets. 
And with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video on portfolio performance. I've been Denchi. Goodbye.